Hello everyone, this is Fiona Apollo and I do art commentary. Today I wanted to once again delve into the subject of art styles and our relationships with them both as artists and as viewers. We've spoken about art styles before in the context of people having a preference and how certain styles are often preferred or better received than others, but this is a bit different. That aspect is still very present, but I wanted to look at it more through the lens of how people perceive art styles in relation to the world around us, and how they can be perceived to be an artist's all-encompassing identity and value, often monetarily speaking, which can be both a benefit as well as an obstacle obstacle to that artist's own journey depending on how it's approached. I've been having a lot of complicated and mixed feelings on this lately, in the midst of the current crisis surrounding creative fields, what with AI taking people's jobs, filmmakers, writers and actors in the states going on strike, and multiple animated series being deleted permanently from streaming services as tax write-offs has me thinking about art's place in the current landscape of late-stage capitalism. Is it still important to just do your own thing and go at your own pace on the road to steady self-improvement, to strive towards learning and expanding our scope of what our own skills and hard work can accomplish not just for any gain, but just because you like it? Or is it more important to establish yourself as being as neatly packaged and consumable as possible, and have your art style only be permitted to flourish if it stays within the confines of its own expectations? I've been noticing a lot more often that people tend to dwell on whether an art style is marketable versus enjoyable or meaningful. We're living in some weird times and I don't know how or what to think about that, so I thought it would be easier to just do what I do best and ramble for about 15-20 to 20 minutes, if that's alright with all of you. I don't really feel like I have a solid point with this or anything, it's just something I wanted to open up a conversation about because it feels interesting. There is so much to be said about how modern society and capitalism especially treats the arts now, and it's also a lot easier for people to lose themselves within that. If it doesn't make money or improve efficiency then somehow it's seen as useless, and the fact that many people are struggling doesn't help the encouragement of that sentiment among artists themselves, so that's what I wanted to talk about today. If you like what you're hearing, then please consider liking and subscribing. Please note that everything said in my videos is purely speculative unless evidence is given to state otherwise. I'm just one person working on these videos and sometimes I get stuff wrong. No big deal. Just let me know in the comments. And please let me know what you think of this topic too. I'm interested in hearing people's thoughts on this stuff. Alright, let's begin. Part 1. What's in a style? An art style is evident in many ways regarding an artist's work. It communicates an artist's thought process, their likes, sometimes their dislikes, their learning process, and can be a reflection of how they either view the world or wish the world to be. The first thing you might think of regarding this is probably how it looks, how thick the line work is, what colours they use, subject matter, composition, and all of that. And while that's a big part of it, there are other contributors as well. The way the piece is constructed is also considered part of the artist's style. The materials they use, are they traditional or digital, whether they choose to display the piece on a screen or on a canvas? Is the piece animated or interactable? Where do they choose to showcase it? Why do they choose to showcase it and why do they choose to do it in this way? All of these things add up to create a unique perspective and experience that is specific to the artist who created it. Aiming for a style in the beginning can help a lot with improvement and willingness to understand a variety of subjects within art itself such as anatomy, lighting, modelling or rigging if you're into 3D, and things like that. I got into anime after reaching high school and used that as a foundation for learning how the body was composed and how it moved. As a result, my works are very clearly anime inspired proportion wise, but I also got into cartoons and webcomics as well, and now I'm trying to experiment more with textures to try and make my pieces look more interesting overall. My journey is a slow one, but it's still ongoing and I'm happy for the most part with what I make, even if I do wish I was better at certain things. Well, a lot of things. And to be honest, I think that's one of the reasons why a lot of people and artists specifically are very against AI generated works. It cuts out a lot of that process and thought which is integral to building up an artistic identity, and that process can often feel very personal. As such, that personal connection that can be shared with onlookers isn't present either, which is why you have the idea that AI works are soulless, so to speak. Even if sometimes a lot of styles or results seem very similar, it's often more about the journey than the destination. But when you're an artist trying to make your way in the modern world, whether you're trying to make a living through your art or you just post it for a hobby online, you tend to learn very quickly in recent years that for the majority of the population, the destination seems to be the only thing that matters. Of course, you may have some outliers who choose to be devoutly interested in your artwork specifically and how it came to be, and while that can happen purely due to the artwork alone, with how saturated the art world has become, which is in part due to increased accessibility both in viewing and creating works, appreciators seem to be becoming more drawn towards artists as people and how 
they present their work more so than the art itself. So here is what I have an issue with. Instead of being a symbol of artistic expression, art styles and the people who utilise them are becoming similar to this kind of all-in-one package deal. Artists seem to be getting viewed more and more as a brand identity rather than actual people. Because of this increased saturation and the convenience of having thousands of artworks be viewable at your fingertips, this causes a bit of disconnect between the artist and the viewer, namely because it takes away that face-to-face -face dynamic and makes it harder to view the work you see on screen as having such personal connection to another human. Also because of that, many who want their works to be noticed have to try and stand out from the crowd far more than they had to 20 or even 10 years ago. This has resulted in a lot of artists feeling like even though they are engaging with a style they like or if they have a niche, they have to adopt a gimmick, a defining trait, or even if they don't have any of those, have to be astronomically skilled and basically be at the top of the food chain in their chosen medium or subject matter to get any recognition. There's something to be said about why individual artists feel like they have to have these weird expectations placed on them even though there are corporations and business who provide this type of commercialised artwork with their own styles and everything. For example, Sanrio. Everyone knows the Sanrio art style. It's cute, it's round, it's friendly, it's appealing, and aside from some glaring issues, it tends to be very well received. But the problem today is that, well, people are a bit sick of corporations and actively seek out individuals more so than they used to. But that doesn't particularly count for much if those individuals are going to be treated exactly the same as a big name corporation. Those big businesses are run by hundreds or even thousands of people, so how the hell are you expecting one person to keep up the same level of quality and output? The margin for error also feels much smaller too. Once someone appears to have an established brand, any experimentation that is posted alongside it is met with much less enthusiastic reception. And because of how much pressure is put on trying to make sure your numbers go up steadily over time, this also contributes to a reluctance to try anything different. Humans are creatures of habit, which might explain some of this. If someone watched your YouTube channel for the latest drama on specific individuals, for example, it's unsurprising when your viewership drops after posting a story time or a movie review. Like, imagine if Junji Ito decided to make a slice of life romance series. It would be so far from the horror elements people have come to expect from him that they would be initially drawn to it because it has Ito's name attached, and then they would probably convince themselves that there is going to be some horror-inspired twist halfway through. But when there isn't, and it turns out he just made a cute slice of life manga with no horror attached, unless it was literally a game-changing piece with the same cultural impact as his works in other genres, it's unlikely many people would receive it well, and might even react extremely negatively by thinking that this somehow diminishes the work he's already done. You know, thinking that doing something different is somehow the beginning of Junji Ito's downfall. This leads to a really tricky situation whereby it feels like people can't deviate. Obviously none of what I'm talking about is a new phenomenon either. If you look at the music industry, this exact thing has been the case since its inception pretty much. Musical artists' aesthetics, personalities, and interactions with fans is just as, if not more important than just the music. My issue isn't that this has only just started to become a problem when the visual arts are affected, but because the world has gotten to such a point where even more so than the past few decades, absolutely everything is motivated by money and a sense of gain. It doesn't feel like people can just make things for fun anymore without the risk of either being ridiculed for it or being told by someone, hey, you're good at this, you should try to make money out of it. I remember seeing this study going around where different children who liked to draw were either promised a reward for drawing, were surprised with a reward, or got no reward after doing so, and the results were that the children receiving rewards started to draw less, and for the children who were promised rewards, their drawings actually got worse. People like to preach the idea that capitalism breeds innovation, but what actually happens is that you get the same product sold to you but with different packaging and prices slapped on top. That's not innovation, that's replication, and it can get boring very quickly. So when someone decides that, yeah, I want to give doing art for a living a try, all of a sudden they're not just an artist anymore, they're a production manager if they want to sell art prints, they're a marketer if they want people to look at it, they're a social media manager if they want people to view their works and them by extension positively, it just kind of balloons into that person wearing a dozen different hats at the same time. Even when you're just drawing for fun, thanks to apps like TikTok being a never-ending barrage of rabbit holes to fall down and current hustle culture surrounding the monetization of any skill you have at your disposal, it's easy to be sucked into the mindset of thinking that you need to make the most out of that skill, even if that wasn't your original intention. As a result, people get burnt out doing things they enjoy, their motivation goes down, they don't have the time or energy to make things of the quality they want to, they can't even make certain things they want to because it won't be received well. It's all just a big mess of misplaced expectations being disproportionately placed on individuals and it kind of sucks. Part 2. Skill Issue 
So while developing your art style can help with figuring out what you like and how to understand certain skills, this also helps you figure out what you don't like to do. So fun fact, in high school I also used to paint realistic scenery paintings with acrylic, but I hated it because my art teacher basically forced me to do it since she hated anything to do with Disney and anime. Wow, I just kind of realised how ironic that is given the topic. Oh my god, have I become the pretentious art teacher? <laughs> oh no. But basically, due to that association, and also the fact that I switched mediums, I find it really hard now to go back to drawing non-abstract backgrounds to the point where sometimes I'm just kind of making up excuses to not do them. After a while, an art style can become less focused on improvement and instead morph into a kind of comfort zone, which in itself isn't bad, everyone has those. But that said, I think the amount of emphasis placed on finding your art style may often be working against many people, and I'm also starting to think that this attitude is being influenced more so by an increasingly corporate perspective as time marches on, especially when you consider that some artists will refuse to draw certain things because it doesn't fit their brand. It's very common that people can become averse to drawing anything that they aren't familiar with seeing in a particular style and claim they can't do it. For example, lots of people develop certain hallmarks to their character's anatomy to avoid drawing certain things such as regular hands and feet. Fingers and toes are frustrating to get right, so it's understandable, so sometimes it's easier to draw them in a more simplified way such as with the Adventure Time art style. The way I see it, skill issues when talking about art are less to do with actual skills Skill and much more to do with willingness to actually try something different. People can often tell the difference between when you struggle to draw something versus you having a preference. It's a lot more obvious than people like to believe. It's quite impressive, but also downright depressing, the amount of pushback people will give against something they've decided they don't like and as a result can't do or aren't willing to try. And you know what, that's their choice. I don't believe in trying to force people to do things they don't want to. If they're not going to draw the stuff you want to see, then don't give them money, give it to someone else, or give the attention to someone else. Else. But that said, it can still be upsetting for people who want to commission an artist to draw a specific thing because they adore the art style, only to have that artist go, hmm, sorry, that doesn't fit my brand. But this can also have a lot of social dynamics mixed in too, which we've started to see more clearly as diversity and inclusion is being taken more seriously. How many times have you heard phrases like, I don't know how to draw fat characters, I don't know how to draw POC facial features, I don't know how to draw darker skin, I don't know how to draw disability aids like wheelchairs or crutches, I don't think that stuff fits my art style. And to be honest, this is something that really bugs me because, in my opinion at least, showing how you are able to stylize certain things within your own works is how you set yourself apart. And that's also not to imply that anyone with an established art style is a one-trick pony or anything. People often mistake one art style as being an artist's entire personality, but even though certain traits might carry over regardless, a person can have multiple identities depending on who they're with, what they're doing, where they are, and having different styles to suit a particular setting is about as normal as wearing a suit to the workplace or a party dress on a night out. It's very common to see artists with recognisable or even well-known styles experimenting with different ones from time to time. That's how they learn. But I think what doesn't help this is the expectation that artists should be at the whims of the people looking at and interacting with their art, which isn't or shouldn't be the case. When an artist doesn't have a lot of a certain subject matter or design in their portfolio, this can often be interpreted maliciously. For example, Vivsy Pop draws a lot of very slim characters, her female characters especially tend to be quite curvaceous, and a lot of people tend to take this the wrong way. But at the same time, you can't really force her to draw something different, and trying to do that will only make people less enthusiastic about doing so. It's important to expand the scope of what encompasses an artist's skill set, but you're still entitled to draw what you like, even if you draw that thing a lot. There might be a vocal minority who try to make you feel bad about it, but sucking at something is the first step to being sorta of good at something. You used to be bad at drawing the thing you almost exclusively draw now, but you got there in the end. I think it just puts a bad taste in people's mouths sometimes when it's very clear that someone has developed their skills and their art style significantly over time and just staunchly refuses to draw certain things, but again, you can't exactly make them. I've seen a few instances where people wanted to commission specific artists because they wanted to see their own characters in that artist's style, but the second the design is slightly chubby or has unconventional features, the customer gets shut down, but don't let that get to you too much. If people want to treat their artwork like a business or brand, then you should too and just take your business elsewhere. The one good thing about a high saturation of artists is that you get to have your pick of the litter as far as custom art is concerned, so shop around a little. You might find someone with a very similar style who is willing to draw your characters. All in all, people can use brand identity as a way to divert potential criticism or lapses in their portfolios, but at the same time, it's likely that would have been prevalent even if there wasn't a brand-oriented mindset attached anyway. But that doesn't make it any less interesting and sometimes frustrating depending on how you look at it. Part 3. Does it matter? 
So yeah, overall, I think I'm just frustrated with how things are at the moment. Some people feel like they have to fit themselves into boxes and others feel guilty sometimes about enforcing that idea by liking certain things, which by the way is silly. It's good that you care, but there's a reason certain styles are popular, it's because they look good. Don't feel bad if you don't prefer someone's experimental stuff, it's not an obligation. But I think the identities that we both cultivate for ourselves and assign to others surrounding this is just really fascinating. But yeah, there's a lot of uncertainty surrounding the arts at the moment and that kind of inspired this sudden need to look inwardly about it. I've also had a pretty entrepreneurial year as far as my own platform is concerned, which might have had a hand in that. All I know is that I enjoy seeing people create things, and sometimes it's hard not to notice the elephant in the room. Some people feel that creative freedom is conditional, and it can be in a lot of ways, but you're still the person who makes the art. The art doesn't make you. Anyway, that's it from me. Thank you so much for watching, and if you like this video, please do not forget to like and subscribe. What do you guys think about all of this? Go ahead and let me know in the comments. Or alternatively, you could all just tell me to go take a nap. I'm really tired. It's been a busy few months. Stay safe, everyone, and I will speak to you soon. Bye!